Pokemon. This multi-billion dollar company has released over a thousand of these adorable little dudes. But on February 12th, 2022, everything changed. Smash, 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 smash. And ever since Mark's escapades, everyone fucking ever has decided that they want to throw their hat into the ring. But Onyx plus Cloyster is not the entirety of a romantic evening. And so I posit to you this question. Which Pokemon from the entire Pokedex will give you the best one night stand? How is this different from a regular Smasher Pass? And I'll tell you, this is a Smasher Pass. That's boring, everyone's done that. No, what I bring to you today is a ranking of one to 10, 10 being the best of how well each Pokemon would do in a lovemaking session, as well as the rest of the date. We're gonna combine those scores and we will have ourselves the best one night stand Pokemon. 1,008 Pokemon is too many Pokemon for me to discuss. I don't want this video to be two hours long. So it's time to do some cutting. First and foremost, any Pokemon that is currently in Smash Bros. They're too busy smashing someone else, they don't have time for you. Next off, any legendaries or pseudo legendaries, Haxorus included, because he got robbed. You couldn't pull a legendary. Let's, let's be honest, I couldn't pull a legendary. You couldn't pull a legendary. Off the list. Next off, any of the common Smash Pokemon, Gardevoir, Lopunny, Vaporeon. If you've had that idea, so is somebody else. They're taken already. Paradox Pokemon, those are gone too. They either don't exist yet or they're already extinct. You, it's not, it doesn't, it just isn't gonna work. Baby Pokemon, no. All of the Pikachu clones, Meryl included because catfishing isn't cool. Starters, because that's too much like childhood friends and that's too much like children and I ain't touching that. Height requirements, because as much as I don't wanna yuck anyone's yum, at a certain point, you just, you just can't make it happen. So anything under one foot and anything over nine feet, off the list. Birds, because they remind me too much of my pigeons and I will not think about them like that. And if anyone's curious about my cat, this script was written before I had her and I'm not rewriting it. Objects, because that is not a hookup, that is a night alone. Fossils, because how could you, any Pokemon that is in some way related to a dead participant for reasons I shouldn't have to explain. Examples include Phantom, Cubone, and Tangela. I know it's in there. Pokemon that you can't reasonably spend a lot of time around. I shouldn't need to explain this, but again, Slugma. I can't go on a date with a Slugma. I cannot spend a night with a Slugma. Any Pokemon that can Mega Evolve or Gigantamax, because I do not want that to happen in the Throes of Passion. Genderless Pokemon and Pokemon in the no egg group egg subtype, because I will not force asexuals to participate in this study. I'm also ruling out these specific abilities because I do not want to wake up dead. And on the other side of that coin, these boys are disqualified for their safety rather than mine. And finally, a special little category I've included called do not sleep with these creepy weirdos. There are a few more Pokemon that are off the list but didn't really fall into a specific category. Behem and LGM, as well as Larvesta, because they're all aliens. Tinkaton and Line, wanted for murder and accomplice. Aeron and Line, wanted for domestic terrorism. Komala is in a coma, and I shouldn't have to explain why that's off the list. And Slowpoke and Timple are not aware enough to save word. No. And finally, Young Goose and Gumshoes, who are certainly Republican and waiting until marriage, and Linoon, who, quote, only runs at full speed and in straight lines. And we do not support homophobia on the Wobblehawk channel. Finally, the last thing to cut is any Pokemon left over that I could not think of a joke for. Here's the list. Fuck, leave it in the comments if you could come up with something. I, I don't care. So, that leaves us with exactly 242 Pokemon. Let's see how they rank. Welcome to the chart of One Night Stands. Now the way this chart works should be pretty obvious. What? But let me spell it out for you. 10, good. 10, also good. One bad, one bad. Horizontal is the date, vertical is the love making. That's where you want to be, the absolute pinnacle of hooking up. Who will be crowned champion? Let's find out together 
right now. Now we're gonna start off with the middle of the rotors, and who better to start off with than Metapod. You'd think Metapod would be higher, cause what with the, it's the go-to dick joke, but I mean, all he's got is Harden. That's not, I, that's, that's not enough. Kakuna is similar to Metapod, but a little higher up, cause at least he's got a job and he will treat you right. ADHD times a million, but He'll find your keys. Where madame will leave your bed covered in sand, trash, or a pile of leaves. Every form is bad with where madame. They're all bad. None of them are good. They're all bad. They're just not, it's not a good time. Floatzel gets some extra good boy points for being a lifeguard. He's buff, he'll take you on a nice swimming date, and all in all, this is a pretty good time. Vanillite is a nice guy, but Vanillish is an ice guy. And Berserker is a knife guy. Although he probably didn't shower. Now, Watchhog's eyes glow in the dark. No, it is not a choice, and no, I am not okay with it. Sneasel has a habit of stealing children. Pansage, quote, gives leaves to the weary to reinvigorate them. And well, if it lasts for more than four hours. Now, Makuhita will cook you a nice meal. He's very fulfilled in his own life, and that's what you want in a partner, but he'll never want to stop ever. Politoed would have a higher score, but she'll try and bring her kids. Not good for a date. You ever wanted to have a threesome with one guy? Licky Tongue seems like they'd be higher, but they're really just good at foreplay. Fun fact about Dubwool, apparently they are supremely bouncy. Panjam is barely tall enough to ride this ride, but at least he'll take you somewhere fun. You'd think Vibrava would be lower, and it is. It likes playing with others with the water ring on its tail. Kinky. And Palafin- This is the same Pokemon! You don't get to just put a heart tattoo on your chest and try again? Get out of here! Now, Qfint is a nice guy. He's not very experienced, but he will help you move your couch. <laughs> now, Skiddo is not a very good date. They'll just take you to a field and photosynthesize. And Gogo isn't much better, but... Glamiao purrs when affectionate, but claws when displeased. Some people are into that, but a bad dinner date's gonna get you mauled. Teddy Ursa is literally always licking honey. Stay away from this sticky infant. Tentacles. Now based on physics, uh, you should go blind just by saying this thing's name. However, it does have experience swallowing things whole. Amoongus. A knight with Hariyama will go one of two ways. He's either gonna call you sport, or he's gonna throw a car at you. Snubble does have a mean face, but he is shockingly affectionate and playful. Luxios communicate with short electrical bursts from their paws, and my safe word can be voltage, but it shouldn't require voltage. Ludicolo will show you a good time, but will straight up leave if your playlist is boring. That's a lot of pressure for one date. Whimsicott can slip through a gap of any size, ho ho, but it's gonna leave cotton fucking everywhere. What can be said about Bunnelby? They will dig the whole night through. That's not a euphemism, come back to bed. <laughs> Orthworm will take you on a lovely botanical garden date, but he's gonna eat the garden. Anyone who takes a bite from Blissey's egg becomes unendingly caring and patient with anyone. Not only is she vanilla, now you are too. You'd think the whole heartbeat bouncing thing would be the deal breaker, but the real deal breaker is that Spoink's a fucking thief. Sorry, Danny. <laughs> Seal cannot walk, and while I am not ableist, it's also too slippery to stay in a wheelchair, so you'll have to carry it everywhere. Clodsire apparently has spines that can be released as, quote, a risky maneuver that puts everything on the line. That's hot. Vigoroth, quote, never stops moving, so the date is a workout, the meal is a chore, and the passion is very one note. Electros is both phallic and has a sucker for a mouth. That's a little sum for everybody. Biberal is a considerate and hardworking individual, so they'll take you out on a nice date, but they're not brave enough to take risks in the bedroom. Blitzel and Inke are both epilepsy warnings, but Inke will also suck the motivation out of you. Abra is technically awake enough to consent, which is important, but that's really all it's awake enough to do. Relicanth hasn't changed in a hundred million years. So apparently he's the perfect life form, but that doesn't mean he's got all of the isms. 
Greedent does have a particular talent for eating out, but as soon as that part stops, he's just gonna go to the kitchen and get a snack. Persian is a mafia baby. You're doing everything yourself. Two of his abilities are great for this. One of his abilities is terrible for this. Noibat can tell if fruits are ripe just by hearing them, so he's gonna cook you something great for dinner. Scrafty is a known bastard, but based on his shield entry, if he's willing to go on a date with you, he thinks you're pretty cool. BDSM. Buddies doing sexy meetups. BBBBBB. Love Disc will tell you they love you on the first date. <laughs> Doof. Two heads are better than one, but Giraffeurg's tail has a tiny brain and will react to smells by biting. One head is better than that. Kingdra creates whirlpools when it moves or yawns, and I don't know what that's going to do in a bedroom, but I do know that when you guys are cuddling after and it yawns, it's going to make a big mess. Ambipom, quote, deftly shucks nuts. Don't shuck my nuts. <laughs> Oddish does scream when you pull on its leaves, but it won't be there in the morning. Gastrodon only eats plankton and tastes terrible, so the meal's gonna suck and there's no kissing allowed. Dugdrio. There's three of them, they're phallic, but they're gonna leave pebbles in your bed. Mastiff is one of those, like, edgy, look at me, I'm dark and brooding, but he's just a, he, he can't pull it off. Lillipup, on the other hand, is a cutie, and he knows it. Also an excellent judge of character. Galarian Ponyta will heal your injuries, but will leave at the first sign of evil. Chansey, however, will do all the same things, but is happy to stick around. Goldango. It's, it's a gold digger. We, we all saw this coming. Come on. Ice Q. Nice. Corp. Corp, 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 corp. Fun fact, the endorphin rush you get from a night of lovemaking is a great headache cure. You're gonna be Psyduck's best friend. Hitmonchan will only talk about boxing for the entire evening. And he only lasts three minutes. It'll be a great three minutes, but it's not gonna be any more than that. Hitmonlee, on the other hand, is apparently an excellent masseuse and very flexible. Arbeliva, there's a seed sower joke here. I don't know what it is, Bellsprout likes it hot and moist. What that mouth do? If it senses any type of danger, it will spray a special ink. That's a sub. Gossifleur. I don't care about this thing. Cyclozar is made happy by human body heat. Alomomola. This is just palafin again. It uses its hand sleeves like whips so fast that you can't even see it. That is too kinky for anyone's good. Now I know I outlawed birds, but I do have an exception to that rule. Look at it. Look at this. It had to be included. Clodzer can swim at 60 knots. That's 69 miles per hour. Nice. It's wet, it's wicked fast. This is just a vibrator. Mamoswine only performs well in sub-zero temperatures and no one can keep it up below freezing. Ow! This is another bird. How did this get past the filter? That sure is a hexagon. Golem can withstand even a dynamite blast, and that's a power bottom if I've ever seen one. Sea King, I really wanted to include on this list, but 90% of his dex entries were about his family. He's not, he's not hooking up. Growlithe is, he's sure gonna try. Dugong is Mamoswine, but to a lesser degree. Ha, <laughs> degree. Now I know the tail looks like a particular bedroom item, but that is a drill. No. Now, Poliwhirl does come pre-lubricated, but you're starting to feel very sleepy. Wigglytuff can inflate their body, they're extra malleable, and if you touch them, you apparently cannot pull away. That's somebody's kink, but codependency's a red flag. Throw always travels in packs of five. And if that wasn't a hard enough sell, they will also try and literally throw anyone over 4-3. Ekans can completely detach its jaw to swallow prey whole, but it can become too heavy to move and that's just, it's more than just being there. You gotta, you gotta, I'm stalling too long, we're moving on. All three forms of Lycanroc are disqualified because no one has a one night stand in the daytime, no one has a one night stand short enough to be just in dusk, and no one is fucking that thing. Apparently Chinchino is covered in oil at all times. And last but not least, our most middle of the road hookup, it's Panseer. He's warm, cuddly, uh, might burn you if you hang on too long. He's a perfect middle-of-the-road option. 
So, we've taken care of all the middle of the road options, anyone who has a average-ish score. Now it's time to get extreme. Specifically, extremely kinky. These are the ones that are a fantastic lay and a terrible, terrible date. Starting with Polyrath. His BMI is 0%. He will judge you at dinner. Grablocked is just here to fight a bitch. And I can twist that into a good fucking, but he's gonna leave immediately after. Panpour. That's a wet monkey. He will get your socks wet, though. The picture of elegance and grace. Probably the meanest Pokemon on this list. Jumpluff is the queen of the pull and pray method. They're not very good at it. Tauros will hate fuck you. <laughs> you can do some pretty interesting thing with electrified ropes. Now, Scorlipede is viciously effective with its horns and used to not using its poison until it absolutely has to, so there's no danger, but it's not over its X. Chinchou is the queen of mood lighting, very comfortable in the dark and tingly to the touch, but they're not a very good conversationalist. Timber's always got wood. His buddies don't. Lipard will steal your virginity and your car. Mistrevis will pull on your hair in the bedroom, but they'll also do that thing where they scare you really badly because they're trying to help with hiccups. Sigilift just barely makes it out of the bird category, but it straight up will not leave the path that it flies. This thing moves faster than the human eye. You are not going to know what it's doing, but man are you going to feel it. It's hard to tell which end is which. I don't know what that means. Slackoth's BPM is 1. That's unethical. And finally, the ultimate switch, it's Wobbuffet. That was the fuck boys, time for the soft boys. Great date, wants to take care of you, horrible in the bedroom. Sandshrew is a lot of fun, but he doesn't handle moisture well. This thing has yeast infection written all over it. Mantine will take you Mantine surfing. And that's gonna be a fucking blast, but you are gonna be too exhausted to move when you get home. Blossom will take you out dancing, but that will summon the sun. You gotta get done real fast. We love healthy polyamory here, but at the end of the day, this is still a tree. Either one of these two would give you a very heartfelt and romantic date, but they're already a couple. Mana will take away your nightmares, but will also take away your dreams. Tottering about is not dancing. You can't consent when you're drunk. You can't consent when you're spinda. Vulpix is cuddly, cute, and controls fire perfectly, so the candles or cuddling up by the fireplace gonna be peak. I thought I said catfishing wasn't cool. <laughs> Whew, boy, is it getting hot in here or is it just this next group of Pokemon? No, because these are the failures. Do not date these ones. Patrat sucks. Next. Shiftry is sharp and mean. He won't take his shoes off. This is a tap dancer. Gulpin' these nuts right on this dick. I, yeah, Rhyhorn this dick. So, Oink Alone was a bit of a roller coaster, because at first I thought he stank. Turns out he actually smells good. But, he's that, he, that douchey frat guy that's like, hey guys, check this out. Sup, baby, how you doing? Oink Alone's that guy. He smells good, but he thinks that's enough of a personality. And it's just not. Eye contact is normally a good thing. Not with Scraggy. Deerling and Sawsbuck. Stantler is a deer that's fine. Nothing's wrong with Stantler. He's just fine. He's great. Stantler's great. Mudsdale weighs a ton. That's that's not a fat joke. It weighs a literal metric ton. We got a long boy. Long boy alert. He'll only bang in the car. We got a short boy! Short boy alarm! He will not sleep without his entire family. So Lombre, quote, feels horrible to touch and is often mistaken for a human child. So two things about Rockruff. One, they get meaner as they get older. So if they're old enough to hook up, they're already a bastard. And two, they show affection by rubbing their sharp, pointy rocks against you. Crobat's like that friend from high school that you finally give a chance to and then immediately regret it. 3-1. It paints its fluid everywhere to mark its territory. 
Oran Guru spends its time looking down on other Pokemon, bossing them around, and uh, thinking less of inexperienced trainers. Blipbug is an incel, and he evolves by getting peed on. <laughs> what? Sunflora is completely still at night no matter what. Another no consent boy. Trap Inch is described as, quote, an inescapable pit. That's a red flag if I've ever heard one. Weavile's that guy from camp that said he would love you forever and carves your name into a tree and think that's enough. Cub Chew's snot is a barometer of its health. So either it's healthy, it gets extra sticky and gets everywhere, or it's not healthy, it's gonna sneeze it everywhere. There's snot everywhere is the point I'm making. Bye, Skiploom. So I ruled out Pokemon that were poisonous automatically not ones that could be poisonous by choice. Shroomish is right on the line, so this is a very dangerous hookup. He also stinks. This is a bear. This is a polar bear. Did you give me another bear? No! Quagsire won't even move for food. You think he's gonna move in the bedroom? Not only is it painfully aggressive, it will stab its prey to drain the fluids. Regardless of gender, that's gonna hurt. Hurtier's fur gets harder the older it is. I do not want my date to be wearing their cum socks. Stoutland is more of a technical loss. It's only bad because it is an on-call rescue dog and it will probably have to leave mid-date. We love him for it, but he does technically have he belong down here. Dude, no. Sock hates when its training gets interrupted and needs more clothes to get more excited. That's not really how that works. There's three of them, they're phallic, and they'll leave puddles in your bed. Toadscrewl, quote, absolutely hates it when strangers approach. This is a demisexual. I don't want a lover that comes geodudes. One one, gross. <laughs> really? That's all, the, that's all, that's all we had for Scrub was that's a one we, one gross. That's all we wrote. <laughs> <laughs> Weeping Bell. Put me back in the kiln. Dragalge will immobilize Finizen because it's a better swimmer. If you are a better lover, you will be stabbed. Boltund wants to keep going for three days. I'm you do you, man, but it's gonna get real sticky. Slurpuff is our only ever QD. It will not sleep with you because, and I quote, its sense of smell is 100 million times better than ours. It's not going anywhere near your bedroom. When will we find the moth her? Lechonk literally will not stop looking for food. Plus he smells like a citronella candle and I just can't handle that. Meditite will bring you on a cute yoga date, but he quote, only eats one berry per day. So he's either not gonna join you for dinner or will judge you heavily at dinner. Boldor literally will not change direction. You get exactly one position out of Boldor. Nicket will take you out for a fantastic dinner. He just won't let you have any. Thievial, however, won't steal your food. He'll steal your kids. It cannot live in polluted water, so your place better be fucking spotless. Also, it regrows lost body parts in one night. That's gotta be terrifying to witness. Listen, if you call whipping out a third pair of legs showdown mode, I will not get into bed with you. Venipede has not had time to get over their ex. Not that they ever would. Ladybug conveys its feelings with scent. Your safe word should not be a fart. Now you'd think the legendary Pokemon would be the best one among them, but it's stupid fast, it's not really gonna pay attention to you, it's just, it's overhyped as hell, it's a bad date. Listen, Clefairy has the potential to give you a wild night exactly once a month. Those odds put you down here. Crocodile, quote, tries to clamp down on anything that moves. You are dinner. Wow, Finneon. This date has just been lovely. You know what? I think maybe we should go out again sometime. Finneon, no! <laughs> Torkoal is as loud as a fucking train. I don't want to wake up to that. No one wants to wake up to that. When a school of Basculin show up in a pond, all other life disappears. That's how violent it is. And last and least, Rapidash. Now Rapidash seems like it should be a majestic, amazing time. It also seems like it should be ruled out because of Flame Body, but if you've seen the anime, you know it won't burn anyone that it trusts. However, it is obsessed, quote, with coming in first. 
you will not get to finish. We got two weird guys. They've got multiple scores for specific reasons. Let's talk about that. Slacking has a 50% chance to be the best lay you ever had, and a 50% chance to do absolutely nothing. We all saw this joke coming. Neuvern actually depends on you, not it. If the meal is up to its standards, this could be the best of anyone up here. If not, it's going to kill you. Now it's time for a transitional segment I like to call, Trust Me Bro. Take it away, guys. Cricketune? More like I'd like to crick a see you soon. Cricketune is without a doubt the most dashing, dapper, and handsome Pokemon in the entire Pokedex. There isn't a single Pokemon I'd rather spend a romantic evening with more. He's curvy, he's shaped like a base, he has a fantastic moustache. The Pokemon Pearl Pokedex reads that Cricketune signals its emotions with its melodies. So not only is he a phenomenal singer, but he's a great communicator as well. Just look at him. He looks like a fancy French waiter. What other Pokemon are you gonna find that's better fit for this role? I feel like, I just feel like Sock would know what he's doing. Like, <laughs> if that makes sense. I feel like he'd be the true gentleman type, like in the beginning, like he's gonna open the car door for you, he's not gonna let you pay for the restaurant bill, but when you get in the, into the house, he's gonna be a bit of a freak in the sheets, but he knows what aftercare is. I feel like he just knows what that is, and that says so much. <laughs> About it, I would. I'm picking him for sure. If I had to spend a romantic evening with one Pokemon, what would it be? There is only one answer, and that answer is Ludicolo. Look at this guy. It's like if Fun and Happy had a baby, and his first steps were dancing. This Pokemon is the embodiment of joy. If you look up vibe in a dictionary, a picture of Ludicolo is right there. Along with being just an incredible, incredible choice, it also gets access to the move Rain Dance. So any night can be a perfect rainy night where you guys just dance in the rain. He also gets rain dish. You get a nice night, it gets some healing. There isn't a single Pokemon that is a better choice. Me and Ludicolo are going to Fiji. Why is Metapod the greatest one night stand for Pokemon? Well, I'm here to tell you because Metapod, though it has a hard outside shell, is soft and tender on the inside. The other thing about Metapod is it's ready to change. You see, Metapod is just a transitory period in its life. It's a lover that wants to adapt. Dare I say, the only thing that holds Metapod back from being a great one night stand is because Metapod is not just for one night stands. No, Metapod. Metapod is for lovers. Do you want to do one? You can do one. This is my moment. This is your moment. <laughs> Who is it? Gulpin. His entire body is a stomach. Yes. So that means it's all stomach acid. Yes. If I put my dick in there, that's a good thing for me. That's more medical than anything. You know what? Follow me over here. We're gonna put him over here in his own little area with, uh, with emotional support armor rouge. And that brings us to the absolute pinnacle. The cream of the crop, the tip of the mountain. Up first is not Luxray. The sex isn't worth the cancer. Up first for real is Flygon. Beautiful singer, great communicator. The only drawback is they're a little sandy. It's the first time not having a Mega has ever been a good thing, Flygon. Mian Fu is quick and precise, elegant, and a local Tai Chi instructor. Cool dude. Works hard, naps hard, great for cuddles. I called him Creamtown for a reason. Tentacruel gets a 10-8 for his 80 tentacles. If I... I'm not explaining anymore. Figure it out yourself. Quote, The spare flesh has a mild but delicious flavor. Veluza's gonna cook you a delicious meal, Unfortunately, it is a part of them, but hey, you get to eat them out. Grumpig can psychically control your entire body. That's a killer dom, and apparently he's also a killer dancer. Who knew? 
Miss Magius have been known to cast spells to make people fall in love. So some people search for this Pokemon as if their life depended on it. Seismitoad regularly volunteers his time taking care of the elderly. No, not like that! Everything in the Pokedex about this guy is great. Everything Oranguru wasn't, Passimian is. Champion. Halucha. Swinub, weirdly enough, has a wealth of private hot springs to take you to for a uh, private afternoon. Palpitoad is a vibrator. He's also a good singer. Delcaddy is as expensive as they come. You will go to a five-star Michelin restaurant, you will be paying out the ass for the entire evening, and you will be talking about this evening for years to come. Eh, come. <laughs> <sighs> Victory Bell are said to live in groups deep in the jungle, and no one has ever returned. I know that's meant to be a threatening animal thing, but, I mean, we don't know where Red went after Mount Silver, and if he couldn't make it back, well, he could have made it back. That's gotta be a choice. And just like that, we've made it to the final three. The top of the mountain. I'm not doing this bit again. But first, a dishonorable dismension. The only Pokemon that I could not find a reason to exclude, but that I really feel like deserves to be excluded anyway. Cause boy, do I just not want to fuck a Bruxish. Now that we've got the trash out of the way, it's time for third place. Barboach. Barboach comes pre-lubed, is surprisingly hygienic, takes care of himself, and sensitive communicator. Plus he looks like a dick. The silver medal, one away from greatness. Our little track star, Toad School. Toad School is a nice guy. He's edible and he knows it. Uh, willing to be used in recipes as long as you don't hurt him. Uh, truly the snack that smiles back. Goldfish. <laughs> And finally, in first place, everyone put in the comments your guesses now while you have a chance because it is... When Surskit faces danger, it secretes a sugary syrup from its tip. That fucks. My boy comes pre-lubed self-lubing, and it's delicious. My boy is ready for danger. He's excited, he's happy to be a part of it, and you're gonna wake up to delicious pancakes in the morning. If anyone on this list gets off of this list and becomes boyfriend material, it's Surskit. The fuck are we doing with our lives? If you wanna see more bloopers and an extended cut, check out the Patreon.